Boy, what a sweet time it is, CCG Faithful. It's playoffs for the Aegis Champions League on a Monday. And CCG have their opponent looking to take down a collegiate squad, University of Minnesota's own maroon squad here coming from the wild card side. It's going to be a very intriguing matchup, and it's even greater keepsake because the fact that stakes are completely pushed up at this point. If you lose, you're out. Your season's over. Absolutely. Um, this is this is ride or die uh, for both teams here. Um, it's it's playoffs. We got to get ready for the real drafts, for the real strategies. Teams need to consolidate. Need to become a better, um, a greater sum than their individual parts. And I think today, uh, with some of the subs we've seen coming in, it actually might be uh, an issue uh, for the University of Minnesota uh, to do that, uh, not having their full main roster. Yeah, they're uh, they're in a really bad spot, really, to be honest with you, for a playoff matchup. Keepsake uh, University of Minnesota Maroon already had to bring in one of their substitutes, but they're also going to be bringing in an E sub, which, if I can remember, Aegis rule books pretty uh, correctly here. And if I'm wrong, don't blame me because the rule book for the ACL is quite literally like 25 pages long. I'm not even kidding. Oh, it's awful. But, but <laughs> I think it means they lose one band for the remainder of the series so not only do you have to play with the sub not only do you have to bring in an e-sub who likely hasn't really scrimmed with the squad that much played too much with the squad you lose a ban in these do or die matches for playoffs and never mind i guess i guess that i just got told by production chat that uh, uh ccg has waived the ban so they want to win straight up so that's you know what kudos to them keepsake Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think that's admirable. They're saying um, we don't want to just take the win to take the win. We want the best team here to move on. And um, th I think it's a very uh, intake, like a move that's full of integrity as far as a team goes, because they could just take, uh, a, you know, the bands and then have an easier time. But no, they've decided we're going to play you where you're at. Yeah, certainly a really good spot to see. And I uh, want to make sure to talk about the patch we're on right now. Uh, there, There is a certain new champion, a certain pack of dogs, and a, a certain sort of enchanted blade. Uh, th that champion will certainly be disabled on 13.14 for this match for the entirety of Aegis Champions League playoffs. So I'll just get that one out of the way. But besides that change, it really feels like 13.14 is really kind of just more about the new game mode keepsake. There's not really too many integral changes to the meta, it feels like. So it kind of feels we're just in the same spot we've been for a couple of weeks now. Yeah, I've noticed that. Um, to me, it seems like it seems like maybe Aatrox will come back. That's about the only thing I can think of as terms of like a meta shift that is plausible, but mm -hmm. um, other than that, um, I think it's mostly the same things. I think uh, Rumble will still continue to dominate. I think we'll see a lot of, um, certainly we'll see a lot of Kaiserel. We're gonna see uh, probably Maokai, maybe some Jace, um, but yeah, should be uh, mostly the same things as we've seen for the last patch or two. Yeah, and especially as well, maybe some in the mid lane, some Ari, some Nico. And speaking of Nico, we're already live with this game one draft, so let's go ahead and throw it on over there. We're making sure just to make sure Fixer fix, is fixing things, so we have all the right names set up here. But speaking of that, Nico taken away from the size CCG on the blue side, and no surprise here for anybody that's been sticking around for these streams. Uh, Topo's Poppy is the first band coming out of University of Minnesota. Yeah, can't um, can't fault anyone there. Absolute terrifying pick. We do see the. Uh, Kaisa be taken away from Rock Boom and possibly Radar if they want to flex it that way. Um, because we have seen some Kaisa mid in some of the major regions. Seraphine AD carry is uh one of Heartbreak's uh actual um it's his most played champion and uh split one of this season. So we will see that band away. Uh clearly a target ban. Um Looking at the other AD carries left in the meta that have not been picked away here, I'm thinking Zaya. Kha'Zix actually taken away. Um, I believe that's a target ban because um, Kha'Zix isn't in like a super strong state right now. He's pretty okay. Um, it's pretty, we'll have he's to pretty see. strong. He, I mean, but like you're never being like, oh, Car we got Karthus. This game is ours. It's, it's never, 
or sorry, Karthus, Kha'Zix. Um, usually you're just kind of okay to have Kha'Zix on your team, um, but we'll see. Um, probably a target ban, we'll see if that comes into play later mm. on uh, in the series. And that, there it is, folks. I mean, I was waiting for the final ban. I was going to see if they wanted to go against Kitsuo, if they wanted to target potentially that Rel, some other openings for Radar. They leave the Rel up, and we're going right back to some amazing league to watch. I'm super excited to see Petro's Rel once more. But a good response here from University of Minnesota, the Maroon squad. If anybody's going to have a chance at dodging somewhat, Detro can set up with Rel. It's going to be Zaya in that Featherstorm. Yeah, no, Zaya... Um wants to be engaged upon so much. Her range is pretty close, but she has so much self-peel. She has the ult. Um, she usually uh, gets a Rakan as well, which is um, pretty Ooh. nice. Uh, you can't really... Uh, Maokai. Maokai actually, especially in LPL, has been getting a lot of flex usage. Mako being the primary benefactor of that in the recent series against OMG and Top Esports. Um, winning against OMG, losing against Top Esports, both uh, going to five games. Very interesting series. Go watch them. Um, we will see the Maokai go. I like to see Maokai because it's flex as well as Rel, because I think Rel is really good flex as well. Um, obviously, both of them jungle support. Um, I would like to see maybe a Jace steal away here, but I don't think Radar is a Jace player. I think he's more of a mage player. So we mm -hmm. will just see them lock in the Aphelios and probably go for a jungle themselves, unless they want to keep the uh, Rel there to flex it. But I think really um, you do want to stick that on Detro because it is such a Detro pick. And Kitsuo is more of a carry player. Kitsuo certainly had some outstanding performances on champions like Jarvan uh, a couple weeks ago. We saw some really solid Jarvan games, so that one's still up there. Wukong is still up for the taking potentially as well. I do want to take a moment as this last pick will get locked in to point out the substitutions here for the Minnesota squad on the other side. Midlander Kusho is one of their allowed substitutes, so he, he's been familiar with the team. The one that we have no idea really about, except maybe an OP.GG page, is Heartbreak there in the AD carry role. So those are the two lanes you want to look out for if you're watching for who the subs could potentially be on the Minnesota roster as we have a timeless top lane matchup locked in to close out the first phase of picks. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jays versus Renekton. I think people think it's Renekton favored, but um, if you're a really good Jax, sorry, did I say Jace? Jax. Jace, yeah. Um, sorry. Oopsies. I think if you're a really Close. good Jax, um, especially, obviously, you're going to outscale, but I think if you play lane right, you can get a lot done with this pick. Um, I just think it's pretty pretty overpowered when you can get it to work i should uh, i'll guess i'll say that say it that way yeah Jax is is the i think the oldest counter to renekton actually because renekton is just so much he needs a lot of his damage and his his combos he can chain together with that stun are auto attack based so right. if you go into counter strike you can really just catch a renekton player off guard if he doesn't land the stun you can shut down a lot of his damage and overall carry in that lane so he's been a the counter pick for a while. I, I really do like the, the some of these picks coming out from the University of Minnesota so far. It's a good mix of meta, and they've already got themselves a counter without even going through the second stage of picks and bans. What do you want to see here um, as the R4? Now, for R5, obviously, I'd like to see Sejuani. Um, really good with the Renekton. Um, very good with, uh, you know, like, peeling for this, uh, for this Felios. And then you obviously have um, a Mage, and then you can just play carries in the back line. Um, but as far as R4 goes, uh, for UMN, uh, don't uh, like have to speculate. Pick. It's Ari, which is a good pick. It's a safe pick, too. I mean, once once Ari hits level 6 and builds that ever, hope most likely an Everfrost, that's the most common build path for the extra utility. It's really hard to just get on top of an Ari and catch them out. So it's a safe pick, especially love that, in that R4 spot. It does mean they kind of negate the counter pick somewhat by leaving it up to support but still getting last pick will obviously give you some sort of counter as it looks like we're gonna have another a pretty passive mid lane kind of set up here if that victor is locked in which it is for radar so it's gonna be all about scaling up and not giving away early leads to kusha absolutely um i <sighs> wow um this is still a flex pick we could see a carry jungler um here with the you know um here with the victor. I don't particularly think Ivern's super good. I know people like it with Renekton. Might see the J4. We've had some very good games from Kitsuo on this champion. There you go. We'll get it locked in. This seems more of like a comfort pick uh, than anything else to me. Not that like Jarvan is a bad champion, 
Uh, just that Jarvan isn't like the super meta jungler he was earlier in the season. Um, it just, uh, we've seen so many uh, outstanding performances from uh, Kitsuo on this Jarvan. It will be the lock-in mm -hmm. and probably the lethal tempo as we saw from the last game, considering how many tanks there are. Ooh, I do like this R5 though, actually coming out from, from Uwu, the member of uh, Minnesota's esports roster here, the Alistair. Because when you look at CCG's comp, it's just a lot of AD and it's a lot of brunt force damage, even across both sides. Renekton's going to want to blow you up in a second if he gets a combo across. Victor's kind of ideal will be that later in the scaling game. And Unbreakable will just make sure that Alistar is quite literally the least burstable champion on the Rift once that ultimate comes online. Absolutely. So Uwu's going to be pretty much unkillable at points in this game. And you put the Maokai next to him as well. That's a really good front line to not only protect this Zaya but just absorb a stupid amount of damage the CCG can throw at them. Two really good drafts, to be honest with you, to kick off this first game, Keepsake. So I'm trying to think of um, the uses for this Jarvan. Jarvan is kind of okay in the Zaya in the way that Zaya doesn't actually have any real dashes. So she is unable mm -hmm. to like get out of the thing. But the thing is, every other champion can kind of just leave the Cataclysm, um, which is going to be really problematic i think uh going forward um so i i don't know exactly what they're going to do with this and it's zaya's not even that bad to jarvan because i mean still ulting and getting a few feathers down she's going to do a lot of damage especially if she can have her alistar knock uh jarvan out of the cataclysm she's got no one hitting right um so i don't know it looks like really hard i don't like ari with this draft because it seems like a really good like disengage peel draft and then you have ari which is like not as understanding like a syndra would make more sense to me um like a scatter the week type draft but uh regardless um I'm, we've seen some crazy things uh from kitsuo on this pick so i'm willing to be uh surprised again yeah, Kitsuo has done a really good job with J4, especially in those engages, carrying through not only those, you know, late game, but he's, he was especially proficient in J4 in those early game sets into the mid game to bring the team through in those snowball sets. Detro has been really good at finding ways to engage no matter who the other team is playing again on the other side to set up some really good engages for his squad. I'm a big fan of the Ari. Uh, I think Syndra could get locked in that cataclysm, and with Ari. She can really space out these team fights because CCG outside uh, outside of Rock Boom, everybody's going to be well. Actually, I guess Rock Boom and Radar, Radar right? They're both going to be further back, but the other three are quite literally just going to create a death ball. They're just going to jump on somebody, all three of them, and try and blow them up. So if you have Ari, that Spirit Rush is just so pesky. It creates so much space in fights and really helps spread out that congealed death blob that CCG might throw together, along with the fact that Ari is just arguably the strongest mid laner right now on the patch. No. I, I would personally, I would no. put her two. No, yeah, she, dude. Well, okay, what's, what's number one? What's number one? N Nico is, Nico no. is very, very broken. What? No, no. It's like, it's like Nico, Tristana, Ari. Dude, Tristana, Jace, LeBlanc. LeBlanc's up there broken. too, yeah. Yeah, these things are broken, man. Well, Le LeBlanc's a little lower because she, she hasn't been doing that well with the stack shiv nerfs um and jace yeah jace is probably up there too whoa whoa, whoa, whoa. what <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry I, i've been watching sorry maybe it's like an lpl thing but i've been watching lpl and it's like leblanc is like picker band yeah i mean leblanc is pretty high up there um i haven't seen any leblancs at around the ACL in a hot minute. It's also partially because I don't think Radar likes playing LeBlanc, but... He, he does seem more like mage than... And that LeBlanc with Static Shiv, I know it sounds weird, but it's not really a mage. Um, I don't know how to explain that, but she's not a mage. She's like a hybrid of like an ADC and like a split put. It's weird. Um, she's we definitely will see unique. Though, Imagine like trying to play assassin. Renekton into this comp, though. Just, like, look at this comp and be like, oh, I can play Renekton here. I, I think this looks miserable for Renekton. Renekton getting on top of Zai is impossible. Alistar can knock her away. Ari, you're never getting on top of. And do you really want to get on top of Jax or Maokai? Not really. I mean, like, how do you play this game as Renekton? That's, that's a big, like, question mark for me. It seems, like, really hard to play uh, Renekton in this game. 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely gonna, it's tighter windows, right? So CCG are really gonna have to show off their execution ability and their team play because if you start going in one at a time with some of these combos, like if, if Topo just jumps in on his own and tries to get Zaya, it's not going to work out. And then Kitsuo comes through late and Deep Trail maybe isn't in there. Or, you know, you can switch out, miss and, miss and match all these engaged tools. If one of them isn't there at the right time, it could prove costly. And I'm really interested to see if they can kind of throw fakes, sort of. We might see, like, Detro sacrifice himself at the beginning of a fight to get the Feather Storm out to get a flash or a cl potential cleanse from Zaya out and then have Tapo and Kitsuo re-engage. Once that Zaya, you know, is blown out abilities, maybe you also see Kusho has utilized mul multiple spirit rushes by that point as well. And then they'll come through for the lockdown. It's not an easy game for CCG at all. They love to play these team fighty style comps. They've been doing it all season long. And this is one of the best teams. I haven't watched every CCG game. I haven't casted every CCG game this season. This is one of the best drafted comps against that tried and true style we've seen from the home team this entire split. I will say, um, this, I believe, is the first series that I've casted that is actually not in Demacia. I've casted three, uh, three uh, different series in which CCG has played against Demacia, so it's finally good. I believe this is the first team that's not in the Demacia division. Nope. So, um, I believe they are... They are Zahn. They're Zahn. Zahn. All right, perfect. Yeah. As long as it's not Demacia, all right? I, I was like, <laughs> oh, I'm just the Demacia guy. That's what they call me in for. Um, <laughs> no, but um, we will be uh, moving into game somewhat shortly here. Um, if you had to make predictions for the first game on how long it might last, on you know who's winning, what what are, what are your thoughts? Uh, I don't think either one of these teams are in a position to snowball a game and win it early. This is going to be a longer game. Uh, I think, you know, I don't like... If this was a more experienced team that wasn't throwing subs in, in I would actually give it to the University of Minnesota. But the fact that there's going to be some commu potential communication miscues and such like that, I think CCG are going to find a way to win uh, at the end of the day. But this one's going at least 30, 35 minutes in my mind. Okay, okay. I have... This is cheating, but we're gonna go with it. I have I have two possibilities. I see the Renekton and like how dominant the Jarvan was early in previous matches, and I'm thinking um, it's either Renekton's like stomping early, uh, mm -hmm. and they're gonna end in like 23 minutes, uh, and CCG is gonna win, or uh, we're gonna see UNM go to like 42 minutes and win. That's oh, well, that's what I see here. Two very different outcomes. There's only one way to figure out the true one. We go to Summoner's Rift, but unfortunately, that means we got to get through an intermission. A quick one, I promise you. So stick with us, CCG Faithful. On the other side, the first playoff match for your hometown squad. All right, folks. This is the time for CCG to really put up or shut up by this point. Three games, potentially not even three games, to decide if there's a season left for CCG or if it's all over and the team standing in the way is the University of Minnesota Golden Gophers. Yeah, so looking at this level one, obviously Alistar not having the strongest level one. Actually, we're going to get that answer immediately. I was going to ask you, you think we're going to get some level one uh, play. It looks like we will. Probably won't am amount to much here considering they are spotted out by this Maokai. Ooh. Kitsuo, a little too it deep in. It's 5v4 here. There's nobody else here. Flash knockup from Uwu forces out the Ferromancy for Dead. Detro to get away. A flash from Kitsuo. The flash three man stun on the counter strike. Kitsuo can't flag and drag away, just has to run away. Bit of a split fight there as Mob CM tried to chase Kitsuo. And the others went for the rest of CCG. So nobody ends up dying. That's a couple of key summoners down. But funnily enough, it looks like a majority of flashes actually end up being burned by Minnesota. Yeah, it's a two for one. Obviously, Alistar with that Hex Flash, it's not a bit, uh, as big of a punishment as it will be for um, Kitsuo, but Jax losing that Flash will be pretty pretty poor considering uh, the, st the strength of Renekton early. Um, it will delay the ability to get to lanes uh, for some of these players quicker. Like, um, Kitsuo is just now starting his buff, um, but otherwise, it looks like uh, just a summoner advantage um, now, down here in the bot lane, we do have a little bit of a trade that Athelius took that was a little poor. Um, don't want to uh, do too bad without his support. We'll have to heal up on that red gun. 
It looks like I'm I'm now just realizing Zoro is uh is, is it's I not rock that, boom. Yeah, it's not rock boom. Oh, oh it, it, it oh it Oh, he renamed oh, himself. Rock Boom renamed himself to throw us. Okay, so it is still Rock Boom. I, I, I figured we would have heard about a sub regardless. The good thing about Aphelios is a gr green red start means he can really just live steal and sustain up that first initial trade. But that initial trade really showed off the fact that Alistair is just Topo? not a champion. Ooh, until level one. Topo is in some danger here. No flash, though, on Mob Siab's Jax here. So he can't go any further. QE, no W to uh, stun him up. Uh, so we'll not be getting anything there we will see um we'll see a little bit of an invade here doesn't find anything because kitso did start on to the top side of the map uh kitso at his red now and we will see this uh this maokai back actually repping the drx skin um good for him juhan never playing in basically any of the games but getting himself a skin uh congratulations um <laughs> Yeah, I, I I can't remember what the marker is that you get the skin, but I think he I'm he played he in plans. Yeah, he played in yeah plans. So it was and it so, was enough. I think it's like three games or something like that. Yeah, and was able to but, get that skin. You know what? Good good for him, man. You know what? I, you know what? Good for you. Um, back to the Ooh. actual game. Kitso invading on the blue. Uh, will be caught out here. Oh, start going in. Jumped on. Yeah, jumped on top of. Dietro goes forward with the Fairmancy, though. They do get the stun, and it's an easy first blood. That one picked up by Dietro. Kitro smites away the blue for some extra health. Dietro. A bit more damage. Got the force to flash out of Kusho. Flash. They pull back to Alistair, though, and Zutter is shut out. Or, excuse me, that wasn't Alistair. That was a jungler. Regardless, CCG, they invade, and they take away two kills. This is a massive win for CCG. Obviously, the kills aren't going on to the targets, which you probably most want them on. Obviously, Jarvan's pretty okay, considering um, how Kitso is so aggressive on this Jarvan. But having first blood on Rel, uh, taken by that Ignite, not exactly what you want. However, the real the real win here, in my eyes, is the two assists that Radar has. Getting his passive, 50 stacks on his passive this early, four minutes in the game, he's absolutely feasting. He loves getting these trades so he can get further ahead uh, in this game. That's going to be really accelerating his spikes. Yeah, and it really feels like Victor has been a bit of a weaker spot because of how weak he can be in these early game spots, but they're really trying to oh. accelerate radars. Dietro, hex flash over the wall, doesn't land the stand, and a good charm cancels out the Ferromancy. So Kusho showing off some quick footwork to make sure he isn't jumped on for another CCG kill. This is actually really, really unfortunate for Dietro. He just came from Bezo. He wasted a lot of time there. And so, since he has refillables, it looks like he will just go bot. He will not take another base, but he's going to go to bot with not much sustain, considering he doesn't have the Alistar passive. And I don't know. It just looks really hard, considering how much health you lost in that failed gank. Um, really didn't go your way. The benefit, though, is you do allow Rock Boom to get some solo XP and some solo time towards bot, and he's been able to actually kind of control the wave here. A lot of respect given over by University of Minnesota towards this Aphelios. They now know Dietro's here, and oh, Kitsuo, he's lurking around, looking to set up a three-man gank. We can see now that Minnesota have no idea just yet that J4 is lurking around, and I feel like this might just be a hover to allow him CCG's bottom lane to shove out, and now they can go try and target that first Drake. Now, we do see the Maokai position here to look for an in on this uh, on this mid lane, on this Victor. If a charm lands, he will be there, but Ooh. everything goes wide. Now, he has to head down to uh, go to this 4v4. CCG's Ooh. late, though. Yep, uh, they're jumping on top, and they just blow Dietro up. Rockman gets thrown into the pit. Kitsuo now here as well. Two of them both trapped in the pit. Radar alone on white. both sides, surrounded by Minnesota members. He uses the gravity field to force himself a flash. Flash forward, big headbutt, pulverized. Ubu sets up Charm. another beautiful kill. Kitsuo falls. They have Rockman cornered, but he will take one down with him. Slays Uwu and trades his kill out for Heartbreak, but a big three kills for those Golden Gophers. It looks like Kusho might be looking for even more radar. Dancing around the wave. Doesn't get the gravity stun. Good no. charm though from Kusho. How did he weave between those minions? It doesn't matter. Radar is sent to the gray screen. Radar is so greedy. Not at all needing to happen. Did not need to die there. Um, he does get his first uh, evolve from that play though. Getting the one kill back on Rockboom did give him the assist to get his first evolve on E. But it is a massive loss for the side of CCG. 
going what was four for one, losing the dragon. This gold swing uh, is now towards the more even side. Um, even Jax, who was down like 10, 15 CS, is now caught up. And the game is looking a lot harder and a lot less ahead than it was just two minutes ago. Yeah, the hope right now for CCG is that they can try and play through Radar, who's basically, like you heard Keepsake mentioned, kind of elevated like mid-game victor status by this point, at least from an upgrade standpoint. Uh, not really, he doesn't have the items for it either, so it's it's still a, kind of a, a fleeting sort of silver lining. But yeah, CCG, they don't usually, they usually are good at keeping those early game leads. Haven't shown a ton of mistakes in these last couple weeks to get themselves to third in the Ruterra League, but that was a big one to give up. Yeah, I, I, I will look at, um, oh, an engage onto Ooh. Rock Boom here. Looks like Stun's gonna land. Nitro is a little bit missing. No Nitro will root. finally show up. There's a Gravitan Root. Goes flash. forward. Huge Moonlight Vigil. But it doesn't find a kill. It forces the Flash out from Harpe. Also burns Cleanse so he doesn't get caught with more damage. Big engage in turn from Detro and Rock Boom. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is pretty advantageous. I think you always are willing to trade support uh, sums for AD sums, especially when you have Hex Flash. Looks like there might be an engage onto this Mal guy here. Flash from. Ooh, big slice and dice stun from Topo. There's the Cataclysm Zutter has no flash, can't get away. Good charm from Kusho to create some space. Mob CM jumps Jax. forward, big kill. Counter Strike picks that one up on the Kitsmo. The gravity field drops off. They're trying to turn their heads onto Topo. Topo forced to run. Pops Dominus for some extra HP, but forward goes Kusho. Dodges the charm, the slice and dice. Not enough damage, and the Jax will claim another one as CCG continue to fall by the wayside. But now we go to the bot side. Detro trying to get something back. Now has to run away from turret, just free firing. The Feather Storm is enough, and Heartbreak is on a killing spree. This game has completely turned on its head. Heartbreak is the perfect uh, just name for this game in general, leaving everyone with zero health, not being it's tragedy. It really is. Everyone uh, living on basically no health, um, except for that Ari. I will probably assume this Victor will go into the Lyandres, considering all the tanky members on the side of the UNM. Uh, but it's going to be delayed because of uh, slightly because of um, the fact that one, he just doesn't have very much gold, and two, uh, he did go that tier, which will be good in the mid game, but he will delay his first item spike. So. It's looking rough in this first uh, first game, this first part of this first game. Luckily, like we talked about in draft, neither one of these teams are too. They don't they don't rely completely on an early game lead too much. Obviously, it's nice to get an early game lead. I'm not gonna pretend that's not something that either no, squad wants. No, early game want. lead is totally useless. What? The, both these squads though are looking towards those later fights, and we've had a lot of fights around these neutral objectives. And finally, Zutter's like, all right, let's try and finally take one of them. This Mountain Drake being not even contested by CCG. You can see they have no vision of whatever. So some extra resistance is added for this early game stint for University of Minnesota. It's Topo going for a, a bigger trade against Mob Seab in that top lane. At the end of the day, um, surprisingly for being down four kills, they will almost certainly get this Herald and CCG is only down about 900 gold, which is really surprising to me given all the bounties on the side uh, of UNM. However, the issue is, it's probably the CS in, in the bot lane, but the issue is um, the gold is exactly where you want it. It's on the Jax, it's on the, uh, it's on the, you know, the Zaya, it's on the um, Ari. This is exactly where you want all these kills. So not only do they have a gold, the gold allocation is really good. Oh my god, the mid lane bow just bursts in an instant. The Chaos Storm nearly finds that kill onto Kusho. Radar yeah, goes for out. it all. Comes just short and can't go any further because the friends of Kusho have shown up. But that's how quickly these mid game skirmishes, can, mid lane skirmishes, can turn into something greater. There's Dietro going forward. The Magnet Storm forces out that Feather Storm. As Battle of the Storms as a response. Yeah, it does look like in the background, Kitsuo did find that kill onto Kusho, but Detro now is caught around three Golden Gophers, and that gives Heartbreak a rampage. Yeah, no, it looks like that Cataclysm was dropped. E, flag, drag, Cataclysm, and just walk out. Uh, pretty easy, considering how low health Ari was. Uh, she should get out for free, but Detro, huge mistake on this bot side. Will cause Zoro to miss so much here. However, they are getting back in this mid lane with this Herald. Uh, they should be able to get plates onto this Victor. Now, unfortunate for Victor, he actually didn't get an assist on the Ari. It was actually a solo kill from uh, 
from Kitsuo. So he doesn't get those 25 stacks from it, um, and he doesn't get any gold. Um, so that's a little disappointing if you are Radar in that situation. But uh, we'll have to see um, what they do with this Herald lead uh, that they've you know given gold over to Victor. Because Victor wants to get into this game. He, he really needs to get his his first item and start scaling. He does. He does actually get his first item. He gets the Lyandris. So uh, he will be in this game from here on out. I think Lyandris is a turbo purchase here. You yeah, haven't seen too many games this year from CCG where they look to play through radar, but that's exactly what they're doing. Oof. One flag and drag. Kusho immediately burns that spirit rush. So that's a key summoner down. Should have his flash up. For any later engages, but still getting those dashes out of Ari's kit can open up a pretty big window for a pit. It looks like she will have it back up for the Drake fight, but uh, considering how pick oriented these comps can be, uh, that will still be pretty. It'll be very advantageous for the side of uh, CCG. And look at the gold. I mean, it is. It's even. Like, we're looking at, like, the bounties and all. There are no bounties for CCG, but several bounties on the heads of UNM. If the, if the gold is even, then that's probably really good for CCG, because that means if there's a fight and everyone dies, then they get more gold for it, you know? Exactly. Such a good spot to be in. Here they go. The Cataclysm. pick already onto Kusho. No Spirit Rush. Has to flash away. Gets out of the Cataclysm. Chaos Storm dropped down. There's a big group coming across forward, but Radar will flash to find the kill. Zutter now the next target. So low, but will be able to flash away the nature's grasp only enough to save himself. Getting double flashes there for only one and a kill. You're getting a kill onto your Victor, who's trying to scale up. He's probably going to get Pen Boots or Merc Treads next. I would... Mm, he might get Merc Treads, but I would just go Pen Boots. Um, looks like we might get an engage from Alistar here. Running Ooh, straight yeah. forward. Backs Ooh, up, though. Be careful does have the unbreakable will finally so it can be a lot more aggressive but cuts off yeah to ccg two pretty big fights that they lost in spades and they've somehow been able to reconcile the gold lead and it's been through those plates that are now dropped off and those farm leads to put themselves back in a pretty nice position and honestly even position given the one mountain drake given over this game could could not really be much closer yeah, absolutely. Um, both these comps, um, I think, want to hit late game. Um, obviously, you're looking at the Renekton being like, Renekton doesn't want to hit late game. Yeah, but if Renekton bridges his team through the early game to where uh, Victor and Aphelios can be late, they both outscale their respective lane opponents. Um, so he's probably okay with that. Looks like Dietro did go for the charge in, but will not look for anything uh, past that. Um, and the scuttle will be claimed here. So we'll have to see where the dragon fight will lead us. There are ultimates for, I believe, everyone on the map besides this Jarvan, who will probably have it in the middle of the fight. Um, if I had to guess, based off his timer. We'll see people rotating here towards the dragon. UNM getting the first move on it. Um, Ooh. TP. TP behind, though. There goes Kitsuo forward. The headbutt pulverized does land. Look at Ki uh, Kusho Jax. on the back flank, but a huge Dietro Maggot storm. This fight is broken up. Mobsia finally jazzing forward. Finds a kill onto Kutsuo. Kusho is cut down by Topo, but now he's Radar's alone late. surrounded by three. Radar finally shows up just a bit too late, and CCG are hurting under their own turret. Another jump for Mobsia doing a lot of killer damage, and with those low health bars, UMN are going to be able to set themselves up for another quality Drake. It is a one for one. Um, but I believe the kill did go over to the Jax. Getting this Jax further ahead. I just, Radar did not move fast enough. I wonder if he had a wave under his tower and he just stayed uh, to try to clean it up. Um, issue being with that is that, like, he sacrificed, um, he, like, he chose, like, probably, like, 200 gold. Uh, over like being at the fight first, which I think was probably not right. I think you should just leave the wave, even though it feels really bad to do that. Um, I think when it comes down to it, you just have to say, hey, my team is going to fight here, and we can either win or get the dragon, and both of those things are worth more than the um, the 200 gold I would have gotten from that wave. And it's also the fact that through this game so far, Radar has to be the focal point in damage. Uh, we talked about You talked about how he got the upgrades already, so he's ahead of schedule there. 
has the mythic. Right now, CCG are looking to play through radar to set themselves up for late game. And when he's not there, you can see how sketchy the fights just get. Yeah, absolutely. Having, um, there was a dog pile, but there was just no damage. I mean, imagine a Victor ult and a Victor E on top of that dog pile. It's an absolute massacre if that's the case, but there was, um, there was an engage from, uh, Rel and an engage from Ooh. Kitsuo. Nothing came up. We'll see a fight topside, though. Yeah, here comes a pick. The Chaos Storm over top mob. CF's trying to trade out. Good stun by Detro to keep Radar safe. This Jax so just tanky. won't go down, though. Another Counter-Strike to dodge. Auto attacks, and he hops on out. Now we have Zutter and Uru showing up. Nature's grasp into a head up pulverized, but now they've caught Rock Uru in another gravity field. Rock Bloom shows up. He pops the Unbreakable Will, but that is a broken Alistair pick for CCG. Yeah, I wonder if um, Kitsuo intended to flag and drag out there, or if he was, if he missed. It looked like if he flag and drag uh, the Jax, he might have been able to get him, and he's worth a lot more than the 0-2 uh, Alistar at that point. Um, having this pretty massive shutdown on his head. So, um, it's still going to be really good getting that turret, getting that kill. They will secure themselves a gold lead here, which is really good. Um, but I wonder, uh, you know, if they're kind of kicking themselves for not getting that Jax kill, if they had landed, you know, just that one more ability. And this Jax is just going to become more and more of a problem, Keepsake, because we talked about how CCG, they are a five-man comp designed for fighting. And if you have to keep worrying about sending not only one person to catch Mobsia, but potentially two because of his kill threat at this 3-0 and spot, it could completely wreck what CCG want to do 20 minutes on in this one. Yeah, I, I, I have to absolutely agree here. It's going to be pretty hard. Oh, well, it's Ooh. like Alistar getting caught again. Yeah, another catch on Uwu as he walks into a brush face checking and you pay the tax and Rock Boom will cash it in. That's a huge kill to get onto the scaling of Felios, who's now quietly 3-1. and one. So I actually, um, it looks like uh, Uwu had flash and didn't use it. And I'm going to say, I think he made the right choice. I think even if you get out there, I don't think it's worth wasting your flash um, when, like, your team has, like, important fights coming up. Um, I think you're not worth that much as an own for Alistar, and your flash is worth more than just another death uh, because you're probably worth less gold at this point anyway. So, um, yeah, I think I, I, I think I like that look from uh, Uwu to not drop his flash there. Ooh, let's see if any flashes are burned here because a beautiful gravity field sets Raider up for a big kill onto Zutter. So another big focal point for Radar's Victor has been hit. Another set of 25 stacks as his Victor is now quietly at two items. Yeah, and if you look at this, um, the scoreboard is evened out in terms of kills, but gold is massively in the favor of CCG. Obviously, objectives still probably on the side. Uh, not probably. They are on the side of UNM with both Drakes. Um, but... Kitsuo has had more impact on the map. This Maokai has not really been able to get things done. While Kitsuo is sitting at a clean 100% kill participation uh, for his team. So, um, yeah, I, absolute. Uh, what, what we wanted to see here from Kitsuo on this pick. He's 2-3, and three, but uh, with that kind of kill participation, you're not uh, upset about that at all. Yeah, and we saw last time, um, Keepsake, two weeks ago, the Kitsuo in his MVP performance had a Jarvan game where he had three times as many assists as kills in that one. And that's just kind of the, the Kitsuo J4, more a setup man than trying to carry through the kill department. Well, we've hit that 20-minute mark, so we're early through the mid-game, and you could see how strong this Jax is from Mob CF. Takes the turret, ultimate's popped on both sides, dominance for Tapo, gets Counter-Strike back up, leaps forward, and this Jax damage is just unbearable on the top he does get a good stun flashes out another ward hop from mob cf tries to flash get to the blast cone but topo is able to make enough distance and barely survives the trade with this fed Jax. yeah i mean Jax. i mean they both did uh burn ult and flashes but i mean Jax is totally okay with that because he's oh hex flash Massive. double magnet swarm they're trying to trap heartbreak able to flash out of Jax the cataclysm TP. Uses that Feather Storm double TP on both sides. 
Here's Mob CF. Topo shows up, but with half HP and no ultimate, it's Rock Boom to secure that first Infernal Soul, and they have Mob CF caught. He's gonna have to be stuck in the back of the pit, but he is able to get out, and they find the kill on the Topo. Uses the Blast Cone to get away on the wrong side of the map, but it EQ doesn't flash. matter. Heartbreak now jumped on. Good charm by Kusho, but it's still a big shutdown given over to Rock Boom. And now they're gonna target the Ari Flag and Drag knockup. Kitsuo has another, and CCG should turn for the Baron. Absolutely. I mean, uh, Red White as well, uh, gonna be pretty good for this Baron clear, having the DPS and the healing to get uh, Zoro. Absolutely. Yeah. Radar actually looking mid onto the enemy jungler. We'll get oh. him with the Lyandries. Oh my god, Radar absolutely taking over with this game. Uh, has a second item, I believe, after this Baron finishes. He should have a lot more than that. Um, so we'll see what they will get. But Baron is uncontested, especially with the jungler uh, going down. We might be getting a replay here in just a second of that last fight. Sure, take it away, Keepsake. All right, so we see here in this replay, them positioning around Dragon. Dragon is burnt really fast. Tapo is really low health, but they see the Jax dive in. Tapo gets caught, but the thing is, he's buying space for his team to get this Jax shut down much bigger than his own kill. They don't actually get him, but uh, Kitso does look for the EQ. Flash gets a flash right onto Zaya. Uh, ends up that his team's able to chase. And Zoro gets this massive shutdown. Uh, Ari has no ult left, has no flash, and she will be collected by the side of CCG as well. The first step there for Heartbreak. Uh, big shutdown like you heard Keepsake just mentioned onto Rock Boom, but here's the turn. Flat Pebble Pulverize, they're trying to get Rock Boom. Nature's Grass, the cleanse away, keeps the Aphelio safe, and Dietro will die valiantly, but hold on. Here's the flake, and Kusho blows everything up in an instant to find the catch onto the bottom lane. On the other side, Kitsuo and Radar combined to finally shut down this tyrannical Jax. Yeah, I actually... Considering that they're also going to lose his bot turret, or at least they lost so much health on it. I have to say, maybe it's better for Ooh. CCG. However, getting caught here is not great. Yeah, Zaya, but look though, at going the turn. Down, who's, who's Radar's damage who? is just crazy at this point. Those upgrades are unstoppable. Kitsuo finds both the kills, but Radar does the heavy lifting there. They're able to pick up that bot side tier 2 as well, thanks to Tapo. And they're just going to keep farming these neutral objectives and collecting gold on top of gold. Wow, absolutely. I mean... We will see uh, that the bot turret is collected as well as the top turret. In fact, every tier 2 except for this mid turret will be going down. Look at the gold diff in this game. We will see uh, the knight actually right be dropped. Uh, that was intriguing. Yeah, it was, well, you know what? I would have done it too. I actually don't know why it didn't stop the back because it did go through. But I guess it's just unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah. The Ignite, yeah, you're, you're like a quarter second into your recall, nothing could cancel it. That's why sometimes you see those Akalis when they land W on somebody as a recall and they accidentally take it, they're going to the fountain, no matter oh, yeah. what happens. Oh, yeah. Um, Ooh, hold on a minute Ulti's here. Coming out. It's Deja Vu, they're just going and they're jumping on top of Rock Boom. Nature's Grasp and the flank from Mob CF finds a kill, but here comes Radar. Radar! Drops a Chaos Storm, big gravity field, they're burning Zutter alive. Kitsuo finally gets off a Cataclysm, but can he burn Heartbreak? No, he can't find that kill. Topo going in, thrown under the turret, surrounded by three, charmed up and killed off. Dietro and Radar are able to kite off and kill off Mob CF. Radar is unstoppable, but now they're the only two left. And can they find a way to get even out of this fight? Kusho, out of Spirit Rush charges, can't close the gap, just misses the charm. And Dietro and Radar are just going to be able to walk out and clear some wards. But another great pickoff there by University of Minnesota to keep themselves alive. Yeah, it, I mean, they are getting gold back in these plays. And so I have to say that's good, but it doesn't look like they're getting any map pressure. It doesn't look like they're getting anything like that off. I think Tapo really um, did misplay there. I don't think he had to go in onto that Zaya. He really just wanted to execute her and trade one for one. Um, but she has so much peel with that Alistar. Uh, he does end up going 0 for 1 when they could have just collected the Jax and gone 2 for 2. So, looks like CCG does go uh, 2 for 3 in this trade. A little disadvantageous, but 2 for 3 is still maintaining their lead quite significantly here uh, with the gold. Um, as they're going to be setting up for this dragon real soon. Looks like they will get control over the pit uh, and the scuttle uh, as it is um, for this vision. 
Yeah, a lot of respect for University of Minnesota. They have to start targeting radar in these fights. They've been able to pick off Rock Boom twice now. Kind of stunted his growth a bit. But radar is an absolute monster. 519. There goes Kitsuo 4. They get the Cataclysm, but no real primary targets locked down. Uwu just gets out of it. Nature's grasp of the response. Topo and Kitsuo on the front line just radar at each other. Radar trying to set up Chaos some big storm. damage. Topo gets blown up and is able to flash out. Zutter won't burn in the Leandries, but that's the jungle Will down he? to just a couple hundred HP with the Drake up and CCG. They don't find any kills, but they do just enough to even the Drake count. Wow. Uh, <laughs> absolutely uh, a nail biter. I thought he was actually going to go down uh, to the Leandries. Looks like he will not. Ravadon's finished by this uh, Victor. He is so strong. Ravadon's yeah. absolutely massive in this game. He has survivability. He's about to finish. I don't know about about, about but I mean, he's got two of the three components of Zhonya's. He's not about Level to finish 16. it, but he's, he'll finish it within the next, like, four minutes, probably. Um, third, let me just say, I was wrong about my prediction. Well. Unless uh, unless UNM wins at 42 minutes, it looks like my prediction has been wrong for a CCG win. Um, but uh, it looks like CCG has all the tools they should need to close this one out. They are in the driver's seat. They have two Infernal Drakes with this Victor, and I... I promise you, as soon as Victor gets Infernal Soul, this will be this will be a a one v nine performance from Radar. And it's it's not the hardest job to get on top of a, a stationary control mage like Victor. It just we haven't seen University of Minnesota really hit their own go button. And that's the problem. They're playing a disengaged comp, so when they need to get to the back line, it's a real virtual impossibility. It doesn't help the CCG have just always been starting fight after fight to open up for Radar. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, so we do see a QSS for Aphelios. He actually didn't. I thought he took cleanse. He didn't. He took QS. He bought a QSS. So he felt it so pertinent that, oh. Ooh, there's the Cataclysm. engage on to Zutter. Cataclysm uses the nature's grass to create some distance, but he's still stuck in, able to avoid the gravity storm. Ooh, Flash goes it. forward to try and get radar caught off. Now has him pinned in the Wraith Pit. A good root comes across from that. Featherstorm, but it's not enough damage. Radar is safe. It's only the Alistair next to him, and he's able to be slain and killed off by Rock Boom. And now Zutter forced to run away, jumps back and forward, but it's a valiant death. Kids claims that one, and with the jungler down, you're right, Keepsake. That's another free Baron for CCG. Yeah, absolute decimation on that side of the fight. It looks like there will be a little bit of a tussle here in the bottom side. Topo oh. actually might go downstairs. Gage popped. Ult, just gonna uh, take the it. turret out. And Topo, he gets one stun off, but it's not enough. This Jax is so deadly and finally earns himself a solo bola. It doesn't uh, help at all that uh, this Renekton did go with the Merc uh, treads for this Ari and for this uh, Alistar uh, Maokai. Um, while this Jax went the Steel Plates, which is going to be massively helpful in this 1v1. Um, so... It, it's rough. If 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 you're renekting here, you're you're you're, you're just like, you, you just want to go next game. Um, you, you want to win, of course. So you're you're playing sides, but it doesn't feel very good. Um, especially not getting that buff, being one and four in this game. Um, but um, we'll have to it's we'll have a tough to see. Spot. It yeah. certainly is a pretty tough spot here as the game press that 30 minute mark and it feels like UN University of Minnesota really all they can do is try and play the side lanes play maybe towards towards this jacks because every single skirmish they've taken since those couple opening ones they won have been deadly. Yeah, absolutely. I don't What what do you think is the way back into this game for UNM? Some they got to find a way to play more towards mob CAP in the in the top and bot side. Whatever side lane they want to stick him in, they need to pull at least Topo, maybe another member. But Cataclysm. right now, Kitsuo is still going forward. Locks Zutter in. Good flag and drag through the nature's grass, but he just doesn't have enough damage to burn that tanky tanky tree. So without any support from Radar Rock Boom, Zutter's able to walk right away. Still a massive win though. Actually gets Maokai oh, flash the there. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So we'll win that. Oh my god, look at this radar damage. Is that two <laughs> levels up on this Ari? He is absolutely decimating this mid matchup. Has his completed Zhonya's. Even if he is jumped upon, he will find his way out. And ADC items are... I mean, Rock Boom's a little bit uh, behind, but having that QS... Uh, I mean, 
it doesn't matter when your victor is this far ahead with these items. Tapa will go Ooh, down, I believe. Look at this. Yeah, they're trying to jump him. They brought Uwu over to give Mob Siab some help in that kill. Tapo's just stalling by this point. No matter how long he takes, it's critical that he stalls because the rest of UNM's base is just burning. They lost bot side inhibitor. They're soon to lose mid, so Tapo may fall, but it costs the Golden Gophers so much of their own base. Yeah, dude, if I'm Tapo, I'm absolutely typing in all chat. Hashtag worth. You get a 1 in 4 Renekton, who is now 1 in 5, um, for losing your blue buff, losing two inhib turrets and losing two inhibs. Uh, uh, Tapo's got to feel pretty good about oh, that no. one. Oh no, Zutter, no, that's a death brush, my friend. Huge double magnet storm by Detro, and they're just going to be able to burn down Radar. Kusho and Zutter. Radar is trapped in front of Mob Siap, but he's able to flash out of it. The Counter-Strike is just a precautionary member, but hold on, Heartbreak finds some kills in the background. That's a huge gravity field. Radar finally gets the shutdown on the carry, and it's going to be an ace for CCG. A huge triple kill from Radar to potentially seal this one. There's a bot wave. They're TPing with Tapo. They're looking to end the game. Tapo with that uh, disconnected death timer will come up now. And they have a wave. Yeah, it's super mini. They will end the game right here, I believe. Uh, we will see um, them just, I mean, absolute domination uh, from, honestly, Radar in this game, if I had to say one player. I mean, where he needed to be 100% of the time, didn't die past like five minutes and... Um, Doing a great job. What a performance by Radar. Ends 7 1 and 13 on that victor. And it's a resounding win for CCG after not the best way to finish off the regular season. A loss. They come back and just beat the crap out of the Golden Gophers in this first one. And let's take a look at that final four versus five winning fight for CCG. Keepsake, take us through our Radar Smurf this one. Absolutely. I would love to. This is four versus five. There is bush control vision. You see Kitso sweeping the bush. Uh, Zutter not being tank Maokai really does go down basically instantly here. Uh, everyone going down. Cataclysm onto the Jax. Jax will be able to take down. Uh, it looks like the Aphelios, but so much damage is taken in the process. Radar able to just rotate his spells, flash from Kitso to just get the uh, Jax out of here. And really, it's just a case of Zaya has DPS, but she just gets bursted. There's nothing she can do. Yeah, Heartbreak did Heartbreak did a really good job on the back line, punishing Deidre for jumping forward, was able to find that extra kill as well on to, I believe it was, uh, on to Rock Boom, excuse me. But that gravity field came back up and Radar dropped it at just the perfect moment to make sure to catch out Heartbreak. Now CCG, they're in the driver's seat. And, you know, I, I do want to kind of pat myself on the back here. I, the game was 33 minutes and uh, CCG win, so... I, I guess my prediction kind of came true. Yeah, yeah, no, no, kudos. Uh, you, you, you got me there. So, um, we will see uh, the win game one coming out here from CCG saying, "Hey, we don't want um, a handicap. Um, we know you're playing with the handicap. Why would we uh, punish you further? We want the best team to move on here. Um, showing an integrity move and then winning the game, I think, is just really respectable. And um, we will see what they want to do here in the next one." Yeah, what's the answer here from University of Minnesota Maroon? It's good. There's a lot of question marks in that game. There were points where they were kind of playing their own style, but the only way to answer it is to get to potentially a season ending game too for one of these squads. We'll get to that draft in just a bit after a short break, but stick with us, CCG faithful.